From an ethical perspective, there are no optimal solutions to moral dilemmas. Even with the best study of ethics, there will be such dilemmas we encounter in which there is no easy option. But that doesn't necessarily mean we should abandon what ethics teaches us. In this video today, I aim to look at a historical ethical dilemma and analyze the choice made by this famous scientist and researcher. I believe that exploring the consequences of their actions will help us understand their struggles and flaws, and hopefully convince scientists of future generations to study ethics as well. I wanted to start this video by talking about my own investment in ethics. My name is Alexander Thompson. I'm a fourth year undergraduate computer scientist and researcher at the University of Toronto. I think about things like big data, surveillance, artificial intelligence, and the overall effects that technology have on people in a society, and I think to myself, should I be worried about what I'm researching? Consequently, this led me to think about the world around me. I started wondering, should I be worried that children ages 2 to 4 are exposed to iPad screens for extenuous durations? Should I be concerned when I am looking at pictures of cats on my computer and then receive ads for cat toys on my phone? I started to look at every aspect of technology around me and asked myself what moral weights these algorithms and behaviors have in correlation. I realized how relevant and important these ethical dilemmas are and started to take a few philosophy courses alongside my science-based degree. Now, I want to talk about actual ethical theories and their corresponding consequences. I will be drawing from Virginia Dingham's Ethical Decision Making, which is section 3 of her book Responsible Artificial Intelligence, How to Develop and Use AI in a Responsible Way. The purpose of this book is to help those researching artificial intelligence understand ethical dilemmas they may face. However, I will argue that this section on ethical decision making is applicable to all fields of science, including the upcoming historical examples I will feature in this video. Dignam uses three well-known ethical theories to guide a conversation about facing ethical dilemmas in science. The three theories she uses are consequentialism, deontology, and virtue ethics. The first ethical theory, consequentialism, deals with the most happiness and well-being for the most amount of people. This one's very straightforward in the sense of if you have one person versus five, you always opt to save the five people over the one. The next ethical theory, deontology, involves following a set of rules that are usually naturally intuitive to what we feel in response to things we do. For example, if we feel really guilty about lying to someone we love, then a natural rule to follow is don't lie. The last ethical theory that Dignam brings up is called virtue ethics, and essentially it is following what someone who is virtuous would do. So being always benevolent, following figures in your life that are very virtuous and mean well. For example, in a Christian religion, it could be someone like Jesus Christ. While Dignam only mentions three ethical theories, there are many, many more besides these. However, for the purpose of narrowing things down, let's focus on these three ethical theories in regards to our historical examples. Now that we understand these ethical theories and approaches, it's time to look at real-world moral dilemmas. The historical example I've chosen to talk about in this video is Robin Oppenheimer and the atomic bomb. Before I continue, I realize that the example I've chosen occurs during the Second World War. Often, if we are not in wartime, scientists will not be pressed to make such drastic decisions, but that doesn't mean that moral dilemmas doesn't affect human life and well-being. I think it's important to note that even the choices we make today still affect human life in so many different ways. Furthermore, I chose this example because I think it emphasizes the importance of weighing the pros and cons of each moral dilemma. It's also important to note that while I don't support the decision made by this historical example, I think that this is a very difficult circumstance and should be thought about with extra care. Lastly, please keep in mind that while I will not depict any explicit images in this video, a disclaimer is needed for the disturbing content I will be discussing. Now, let's jump right into our historical example. We knew the world would not be the same. Most people 
were silent. Oppenheimer was born on April 22, 1904. He studied physics and eventually went on to study nuclear physics. After the attacks from Japan on Pearl Harbor in 1941, Oppenheimer was recruited by the U.S. government to join the Manhattan Project. He eventually became the lead physicist in the group. What was the Manhattan Project? Well, the United States had plans to retaliate against Japan from the Pearl Harbor attacks by first working on a state-of-the-art radar project, but then switched their focuses on building an atomic bomb. Oppenheimer lived in Los Alamos, New Mexico, to work on the bomb. He had no privacy from the U.S. government and was under constant pressure as, across the ocean, U.S. soldiers and innocent Jewish people were being slaughtered every single day. This kind of pressure is really far too much to imagine, in my opinion. Finally, on February 1945, Oppenheimer's team had built a nuclear bomb. However, it required testing. They dropped a test bomb in the middle of the New Mexican desert on July 16, 1945. It was a success, and within a month, 108,000 people were immediately killed in the bomb droppings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's estimated that there was as many post-attack deaths from the bomb droppings due to high exposure to radiation. Those are the facts of Oppenheimer's story. Now let's take a look at the moral dilemma he faced. Oppenheimer was asked to use his expertise in physics to shift the tide of the Second World War in the Allies' favor. His two reasonable options were to create the bomb that would lead to the hundreds of thousands of deaths, or to do nothing and let the already existing killings in Europe rage on. Truly considering Oppenheimer's moral dilemma, however, is not simply a matter of choosing between these two options. We also have to think about the pressures he was faced, with both his obligations to his country and the government. Oppenheimer had no way of knowing how long the war would last, and how many more may have been killed without his intervention. According to the historical story we just discussed, we know Oppenheimer chose to accept the task of creating a nuclear bomb. In this case, he followed a sense of moral duty and obligation to his country. This can be seen as Oppenheimer following a case of deontology, with the intuitive rule that one should not stand by while others are killed. Intuitively, no one would hesitate to call law enforcement in order to prevent killings, thus making this choice an intuitive rule one should follow. On the contrary, if Oppenheimer had refused this agreement, it could be seen as him following a set of virtue ethics. When we think of benevolent figures, we think of those who do not actively participate in ensuring the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. Again, just to reiterate, there are truly no correct options in a moral dilemma, but it is very important to consider both sides and to pick the one that seems like the lesser of two evils. In Oppenheimer's case, even though he opted to create the nuclear bomb, he later grimly reflected on the first time he saw the bomb tested successfully in New Mexico. Oppenheimer describes the situation in an interview 10 years after the war. He says, We knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed. A few people cried. Most people were silent. I remember the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and, to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. There are many different interpretations of his quote, but one thing is for sure. Oppenheimer's decision weighed heavily on his mind, as it was still an incredibly complicated moral dilemma he faced. While we aren't able to change Oppenheimer's decision made during the Second World War, it is up to practitioners of science and world leaders to choose whether to further research weapons of mass destruction. This life-and-death example is one of the many facets of research that needs serious ethical considerations before practitioners of science, such as you and me, carry forward with our research. As scientists of now and the future, 
I would argue we have the greatest understanding in knowing how dangerous or potentially morally questionable what we study may be. This means that the first place these moral dilemmas begin is with us, and that all practitioners of science should take a vested interest in ethics before properly contributing to world-changing science. Thank you.